when it comes to social media marketing training and prospecting a lot of times where people mess up is people don't appreciate that which is given to them easily and without effort so if you're in one of these industries and they've been affected you've already put your financial future in the hands of someone else that has proven themselves to be unequipped to protect you, to protect your finances, to protect your life and to look over after you and to make sure that your bills are paid. So if you wanna to start to separate yourselves from the masses, yep. what you need to do is you need to be more specific with your prospecting efforts. Just ask yourself, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? All right, so my guest today, known as, my opinion, the king of prospecting, is Cesar L. Rodriguez. And if you go to his website here, CesarLRodriguez.com, he's one of the most sought-after speakers, trainers, and consultants on the areas of prospecting, closing, and recruiting in the direct sales and network marketing industry today. And why is this relevant to you? Because the COVID is shifting a lot of people to consider a home-based business to work from home or even a whole different career altogether. So Cesar Rodriguez, what's up, brother? What is up, my man? Good to see you again. <laughs> Matt Sapala, the legend himself. Bro, likewise, man. Likewise. B10X. Well, explain your shirt right quick, brother. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, the movement that I actually run and created uh, years ago. B10XB stands for Be 10 Times Bolder. And it's a, an entire movement that's dedicated to helping you transform into a 10 times bolder, more confident and badass version of yourself. So we talk more about it, you know, in uh, this training, if your people want some training on a little hack that'll help them to instantly transform themselves so that they can overcome fear, indecision, doubt. I'll share with you, you know, one of my big secrets. I know I've shared it before, but uh, if that's something that you want to ask, I will be happy to share. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, you know, the, the, the big, the, let's start this conversation because, you know, uh, by the way, how's COVID-19 treating you, man? How's, how's the, how's the uh, coronavirus, this pandemic, this shutdown, how's it affected you? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because one of the things that we need to do in life is to adapt. Now, one of the things that I'm very well known for is being a speaker, as you just mentioned in my bio, you know, so I go to company events, I speak on stages, I spit fire. I bring a dance team. We perform. We do a whole show. I mean, it's, it's a fun time. And it's one of the things that I enjoy doing the most. Now, obviously, with events being closed down and big company events not going down the way that they used to, that is not a part of my business right now. But I could honestly care less because I didn't have all of my eggs in that one basket. So although I miss going out there and just the camaraderie of shaking hands and hugging people because, you know, I'm, I'm Latin over here, you know, we're, <laughs> oh, I, I, exactly. You know, like I like to, I'm a, I'm a lover. I like to shake hands <laughs> and I like to hug everyone yep. and take pictures. You know, when I go to an event, I mean, I spend, I spend hours just doing selfies and pictures with everyone afterwards, you know? So I miss that part emotionally, but yeah. financially no big deal because as you can see here, as I'm broadcasting in my live studio, you know, here at my house, you know, I have two studios in my house. So I'm an internet marketer. I mean, I teach people how to market themselves online, how to make money online. I've been preaching that message for years. Yep. So to me, it was just, okay, I'm not going to speak. I'm going to miss running into a whole bunch of people, but it's all good, man, because I've got products and courses and all kinds of things that people purchase from me literally every single day. Yep. because they love the free training that I put out and they go out and they do that. So financially, I've actually had a better year than I probably would have. Wow. You know, because I've just been focusing more on just serving the communities and just doing the stuff that I normally do. And because I'm already positioned to do Zooms and, you know, all this type of online training, I mean, it was no big deal financially. So it's been different, you know, uh, and I miss the camaraderie, but financially, man, this is, this has been a good year. It's been better. It's better than last year. So if, for those of you who don't know, you're watching this video for the very first time with Caesar. We did a previous interview about a year ago. You may be a couple of years ago. So watch this video right here because 
his internet, if there was a COVID-19 looking like internet, it was back then. Not now, looking clean, fresh right now in his studio. With, Absolutely. I was telling him earlier, man, I had Mike envy, bro. <laughs> that, uh, you know, that, that Mike envy there. So um, we had a conversation earlier, which was like we mentioned earlier, is probably one of the most viewed videos of its time is how to prospect. And we'll get it. We'll obviously get into that here in a minute. But for a lot of people, Caesar, it's not a good financial year for them. And yeah. a lot of people have been affected by the code layoffs. Or the message you've been sharing for years of, you know, start a home-based business, start something on the side, work from home. Now people are starting to listen. Yeah. And in one of the books I reference a lot because he does a lot of my, he does, does a lot of my tax stuff is Sandy Botkin's book, Lower Your, Ta Lower Your Taxes Big Time. And in, uh, he's a CPA, he's an attorney. He was also somebody that trained a lot of people in the IRS, but chapter one of his book, See, I think uh, you'd, be, you'd be delighted to see this. Chapter one of his book says, why you would be brain dead not to start a home-based business if, you, already, uh, if you're, you don't already have one. So let's talk to, not, not from a CPA numbers and logical standpoint, let's talk about from your standpoint, a little bit more of an overarching thing. Why would somebody want to start a home-based business and work from home and they'd be brain dead if they didn't? Well, very simply put, look at what happened with COVID-19. There was an entire world that became disrupted. And there's so many people that it used to be back in the day, you know, Matt, we know, and not, I'm not even talking about back, back in the day, I'm talking about pre-COVID. Yeah. I mean, if you worked at a big fancy office and you had the corner office with the window, <laughs> I mean, that was stud status in corporate America, corner office with the window. Oh, mom, yeah, I got a corner office with the window. Well, those offices, when they started closing down, all these big fancy offices and all these people that had their entire businesses that were not home-based, those people got killed and everyone who did have some type of business that was home-based, they thrived yeah. we had to make a few pivots. So people in network marketing, for example, you know, a lot of the training that I teach is how to go out there and prospect people, how to break the ice with people, pull their phone numbers out in the cold market, out and about face to face. Well, guess what? The psychology behind all those principles that I've been sharing for years is the same exact thing offline as it is online. So everyone that's in the network marketing industry, yep. they just had to make a couple of shifts. They just had to go from maybe face-to-face, person-to-person business meetings to Zoom meetings, and they could deliver the same exact message. So those people's income has not been negatively affected. And in fact, in the network marketing industry, network marketers, all of the leaders, all of the companies, and yours included, Matt, I mean, I've heard nothing but reports of people making more money than they ever did before because now people are more open-minded than they ever have been before. People back in the day used to think, oh, well, you know, I've got a safe, secure job with benefits. Yeah. I work in the big, you know, I work in the big downtown skyscraper, you know, in my city, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, all those people, man, a lot of those people, they did not have the ability to quickly pivot and adapt like network marketers did. And what ended up happening is so many network marketers started to find out that, oh, wait a second, they were never using the internet even to its fullest potential. You know, yeah. they were using some social media, they're doing some Facebook messaging here and there. But then when they started to pivot and adapt and take their businesses online, a lot of them discovered that, oh, wait a second, I used to go out to malls and I used to be out and about and I'd spend all day and I'd, you know, prospect 10 numbers and get 10 new interested people. And a lot of them, they started taking those same hours putting it online. And now they're noticing, whoa, the same exact hours I used to do. Now I'm able to prospect 50 people. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. And so numbers are up. People are more open-minded. And here's the biggest thing. There's a great quote from Eric Hoffer. And he says, in times of change, the learned, well, in times of change, the learners will inherit the earth while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped for a world that no longer exists. And what that means, if you really think about it, the learned, the people that, they were already educated. Yeah. <laughs> they already had their fancy degrees. Yep. Already knew it all. And they said, network marketing. They snuffed their nose at it. 
I don't need to have an addition. I don't need to have a plan B. My plan A is so good. Oh, talking to people, working from home. Psh, no way. Yeah. I could never do that. I like working at an office. All those learned people who have refused to adapt and have not jumped over to building network marketing or finding other ways where they could get paid from home, regardless of what's going out, whether it's lockdowns, quarantines, whatever, those people, the learned, if they don't change, if they don't open their minds, they're going to be beautifully equipped for a world that no longer exists. Bye-bye. Exactly. Caesar, you know, um, I, I'm about to get into some of the prospecting question here in a minute. So therefore, if you're watching this, make sure you stay tuned, you stay posted, because we're going to be diving into the how to's sure. in a second. Yeah. And so, you know, the network marketing industry, for some reason, just hasn't gotten love. You know, when, when, when I sit as a judge, you know, I, for seven, eight years, I was a judge, a national business plan judge for Miller Coors. And on behalf of Miller Coors, we would award multiple entrepreneurs to fund their idea, we had, a, uh, we had a pull of quarter million dollars and we fund our businesses with 10 grand. We fund our business with 50 grand. We fund our business, the big prize is $100,000 to fund a, the best brand new idea and they pitch us their business. But it'd be traditional retail type businesses, right? It'd be traditional brick and mortar or I got a product, I got a widget and without a distribution method of a network marketing type of strategy, yeah. they'd have to depend on e-commerce. They'd have to depend on you know, uh, driving traffic to foot traffic to their retail store. And the, the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, a lot of people say, well, network marketing, I don't want to talk to friends and family, friends and family. The, the video we did on prospect is how to approach friends and family without being weird. Yeah. But when I'm looking at the, the solicitation I'm getting on my, on my email, Chase, American Express, DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, you know what they're saying? Hey, share this link share this link. And if you get five of your friends or one of your friends to be approved or they get a link, you get some free rides or, or you get some cash or you get some prizes. So there's a affiliate program with these guys. And that's generally speaking, what network marketing is all about. Tell your friends and family what we do, because there's zero cost to market that. Why doesn't network marketing get, get to get its love? You know, because it's just the old guard. You know, it's just, it's the same thing. Like, listen, man, when I first got started in network marketing, and for those of you who are new to following me, or you've never heard anything about my story, I'll just say this to give some context. You know, when I first got started in network marketing, it was 2001. You know, I was a 21 year old broke college kid and I had been taught, go to school, get a good job with safe, secure benefits. And that's the secret to success and climb the ladder, right? That's what I was told. You need to get your college education. That's everything. That's going to determine what jobs you can get. So we have such, we were so ingrained our entire lives from this information, this information that's just ancient and outdated that mm -hmm. you go to school, you get a job, you get a 401k, you get your salary, salary is safety, right? Working for a big company, the bigger, the better, yep. the bigger, the safer you are because the chances of them going under are are low, you know, the, the small startup scrappy companies that come from nowhere, the PHPs, you yeah. know, getting started with, with those, you know, startup companies, yet that's where all the millionaires are made. Look at your company. Yeah. You know, yeah. so there's just such teachers, education teachers teaching you that the way to go is to do this. And then you get involved with something like me at 21 years old, I saw network marketing. I went to an event where people were making $30,000 a month. I called my mom and I was like, mom, this is what I'm doing. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You did too. Yeah. So, so I saw this and I called my mom and I was like, mom, this is what I'm going to do. And she said, you're an idiot. <laughs> you're an idiot. You're going to spend, we just spent four years. I'm two weeks away from graduating, Matt. I'm two weeks away from graduating college. I called my mom after going to uh, a meeting and seeing all these people. And I come home ranting and raving like, mom, this is what I'm going to do. This is so exciting. And she's like, you're not going to use your sport management degree that we just spent four years working on paying for like, you're an idiot. You're crazy. Yeah. And on one token, I can see where she's coming from because I know how she was trained. I know how she was programmed. She worked for the state government. She was a state employee. She's been, you know, ranking up her whole life, got retirement coming on. Yep. You know, she's retired now, you know, that living on the, on the pension, mm -hmm. you know, so 
everyone has just been preaching this message for so long, Matt, that network marketing hasn't gotten the respect that it's honestly due. And the craziest thing about it is I went from being a 21 year old broke college kid to making my first million by 29 mm -hmm. in this crazy alternative industry yep. that isn't even taught in school, yep. you know, and until we can educate the masses, which is what we're doing here, which is what you're doing all the time, you know, just preaching the good word that, listen, this is a viable industry. You may have thought that it was a pyramid because someone ignorant who didn't know what a pyramid was yeah. just saw it and they were like, wait a second, you can like get people in and make money from what they do. Isn't that illegal? And they're just uninformed and it's not even their fault. Well, so why, don't you, why don't you unpack that Caesar? Somebody says, hey, this is a pyramid. This is, uh, this is a scam. Scam sense is an acronym for still confused about money. I'm just kidding. What's a, it's, a, it's a scam. It's a pyramid. Blah, 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 blah. Ponzi scheme. Unpack that for us and give us the actual definition. I'm sure you've seen that left to right throughout your entire career. I mean, by the way, I'm looking at Amway's sales here. Who owns the naming rights to the where the Orlando Magic play? Eight, four, $8.4 billion in sales. You don't become an $8 billion company by being an illegal company. And you've been around since shoot, the 50s and 60s. You don't, you don't become that $8.4 billion company. And before you get the naming rights to a professional basketball team, they, they research you. They figure out who you are. Anyway, unpack that. Help us define what a scam, a Ponzi scheme is. Illegal. <laughs> All right. So here's, here's what I say. If someone asks me, you know, or if someone says, hey, is this a pyramid? There's a lot of different ways that I overcome this. But Typically, what I'm going to say, and Matt, why don't we just role play? Sure, like, let's do it. You, you, yeah. you call back, it back to king of prospecting mode. <laughs> let's do it. You know, <laughs> so let's say you, you call this. So call this a pyramid, however you want. Hey, to call hey, it. hey, hey, Caesar, bro. We, we yes, be, we've been in college together, bro. I think what you're doing is a scam, bro. Why? It's a pyramid. It's illegal. It's a Ponzi scheme. Wow, wow, Matt. You think what I'm doing is a Ponzi scheme, bro? Is that what you think of me? <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm trying to scam you cuz okay so first of all let me just ask you something you're thinking what I'm telling you about is a pyramid is that what you're saying yes okay so number one I just want to just pause and segue out of this role play sure. how I answer this is always dependent on the energy that it's coming with so if someone says is this a pyramid that's a totally different energy that I'm going to come at it. If someone's like, man, this is a pyramid, man. This is a Ponzi scheme, yo. That's a totally different energy. Energy. Right? Because one is the person is maybe genuinely just uninformed and educated. And they're just, they're, un, they're uneducated on it. And they think it's something. And they just kind of want some clarification. The other person in your character is kind of being a little bit more accusing and like, you know, very certain. Like, yo, man, this is a Ponzi scheme. What you talk Like that whole little character that you just played, right? So for that, you know, that's the reason why I laughed, you know, because I mean, you're coming at me like, bro, you in a Ponzi scheme. And I'm like, man, come on now. Right. You Correct. To me? So, so now I'm putting it like, is that what you think? You think I'm trying to rip you off or take your money or take, you think that's how I'm trying to, you think that's how I'm trying to grow my, my, my life and my business, you know, by leaving a, a, a trail of broken hearted people behind me. Listen, man, we've been in college together here and. I mean, it sounds like you don't really know me. I thought you did, bro, but you know, I wouldn't get mixed up in nothing illegal that would get anyone in trouble. You know, so let me just hit that right off. You know, let me just cut that right, right there. And then let me just ask you, what do you even think a pyramid is? What is a pyramid by your definition? Yeah, like if I get involved with you, you make money off me. So that's, so a pyramid by your definition is something that if you get involved with, someone makes money off of you. That makes something appear. So if any job you've ever had, do you think that they make money off of you? If they're paying you something hmm. or $20 an hour, do you think that they're going upside down on that? Or do you think <laughs> you're probably making them more money than they're paying you? Just want to let you know, I'm having a hard time staying in character here, Caesar, but I'm just having a hard time staying in character. Oh yeah. And the only way you make money the only way you make money, Caesar, is if I go find out more people and next, you know, I, I make money off the other people and they buy in and they put all, all the money in and you make money off of that. So yeah, that's, that's what it's called. The only way you make money is because I got to recruit other people. Mm. 
All right. So you said a lot of things there. Now I'm going back to, to the first, to my first point though, you know, you initially defined a pyramid as something that if you get involved, someone makes money off of you. Mm -hmm. Or is that still your definition or are you refining it now? Uh, yeah, that's still my, that's not my definition, right? <laughs> What's that? That's my definition, right? Because I think I'm right, right? So, so right then and there, though, you ask the person to define what a pyramid is, and then you actually find out what it is that they're saying. And then based on that, you know where your next step is. So even in this role play, you know, I just want everyone watching because I'm, you know, I'm doing a training to, to everyone that's watching this too, right? I'm trying to break down for you. I don't want to just tell you what the definition of a pyramid is. And here's why. If I just say the definition of a pyramid is blah, 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 and I give you some Webster's definition of a pyramid, yep. that's not going to help you in actually overcoming the objection of this is a pyramid. It might piss you off even more because you're telling me I'm not, I'm not smart. I'm uneducated. Yeah. If I try to, if I try to, to, to have a battle with you here on, on a front where I'm basically going logical, you know, if I try to get into a big logical debate and I just start saying, well, this isn't a pyramid because let me just find out what you even think a pyramid is. Yeah. At times, like you said so many things in here and some of you guys watching this, you'll have to rewind to catch all of the different things that he said in the next example, but I'm turning this into a conversation and not an argument. You see what I'm doing? I'm asking questions. So I'm making it engaging and I'm seeing what is his exact definition. So the next thing that you said was you started to say, oh yeah, well, it's one of those things where you make money. One of the lines that you used was you have to recruit people to make money, right? So right. you clearly said that. Now I happen to know in network marketing and especially your company, PHP, you make money selling the products. Yes. Providing your financial services and life insurance and all your different businesses. So, and all your different products and services. So that's where the money's made. There's no money made necessarily in recruiting. Now you get rewarded if someone that you recruit sells, but that's no different than anything. If you want to go on a car lot, well, guess what? You're selling cars. Your sales manager is getting a cut. They're getting a percentage. The person who's above that person is getting a percentage. The general manager's getting a percentage. The owner's getting a percentage. Everyone's getting a cut of the sale that you do. So if you're going to sell cars, would you rather just be the salesperson who only gets paid when they sell? Or would you rather be the sales manager or the general manager? That or the has owner. A team. Yeah. Or, or the district manager over all the different dealerships. If it's, you know, if it's structured that way. Right. So everything is technically structured in a way, if you're smart, where you can get paid from other people's efforts. Right. But I just wanted to say that, you know, factually speaking, but in, in this kind of engagement, you know, if someone going back to this skit and this role playing is, you know, character Matt's having a very difficult time playing because he's not good at playing stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I Caesar, I can't, I can't even, I'm so far removed from ignorance. I am struggling to even <laughs> ignorant character of someone who believes network marketing is a pyramid scheme. Yeah. There's, there's there's, there's many things I can act. Just being stupid is not one of them, but, uh, that's, that's not a bad thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know how to play stupid. Yeah. The smart money guy. So his name is the it's, smart money guy. It's it, man. So, you know, um, you know, you know, let me just continue, continue. continue. Yeah. Um, in that, in that scenario where his prospect says, Oh, or, the, or he says, Oh, well, you know, you have to recruit people. Okay. So basically Matt, what you're saying to me is, if you are involved in something where the only way that you can make money is by recruiting other people, that's not something that you'd be interested in, but you would probably be interested in just making money by marketing something that everyone needs, especially in this economy, in a time like now, if there was a strong compensation plan, if, and again, this would go to anything I found out about you before, any hot buttons, any report things, that's where I would bring it up. But look, if you saw a way where you could make money without having to recruit people, would that be something that you'd be interested in? All ears, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so good news is we don't make money by just recruiting people. So I guess by your definition, can you see how it was kind of a little ridiculous and assumptive for you to say that I'm in a pyramid where by your own definition, we're not a pyramid? 
Does that make sense? Right. Okay. So it's really is. Okay. Yeah. So it's really getting clarity. Get clarity. I like I like what you said there about not getting in a logical debate because mm-hmm. usually in a logical debate, I mean, look at what happened to the presidential debates. Yeah. They both thought they were right. That's and they had a moderate and they had to cut them off. Hey, listen, you got two minutes. You got two minutes to answer. And both sides thought they were right. And in that debate, the, the one who's watching has to decide. So not getting logical about it, what a, what, a, what a brilliant thing to do, because then it's defensive versus helpful. Yeah, I mean, listen, there's a time and place for logic. And there's certainly a time and place for logic in that objection. I mean, I used logic with you. Yeah. You know, right. Saying like, hey, let's logically, you know, kind of look at this. But what a lot of people do is the minute they get some type of objection, they start overcoming it by trying to drop a bomb, you know, on the issue. Whereas instead, I'm trying to be a sniper. Like what exactly is, oh, this is a pyramid, it's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. OK, well, listen, obviously, you know, you have a reason for saying that. You know, I'm kind of curious. Well, what is your definition of a Ponzi scheme? And most times what ends up happening is they will walk themselves right out of it just by asking, just by you asking a couple of smart strategic questions, you know? So that's one of the ways that I handle objections. The other way that I would handle that is if you just said, Hey, is this a pyramid? You know, or you'd say like, Hey man, this is a pyramid. Um, You know, and I don't want to get involved with, you know, any of those kind of pyramids. I would probably qualify that even further up front. And I would just say, okay, so basically, are you saying to me that you like everything that you see here? You see an opportunity for yourself other than the fact that you believe that it's a pyramid. But let me ask you, if it wasn't, if you were certain 100% that this was not a pyramid, are you then saying that this would be something that you'd be interested in getting involved here today if we took you on board? Boom, yeah. So I I tied you down so hard there because you just basically, I said, so if this, if you were certain this wasn't a period pyramid, would you then be getting started here today if we take you on board? And right then and there, you have two choices. Your two choices are, yes, Caesar, if I was convinced that this wasn't a pyramid, then I would be getting started here today. Now, you're worth me overcoming that objection. I'll spend an extra couple moments to do that if it's a determining factor of whether or not you get involved here today. However, if you go, no, even if it wasn't a pyramid, then I'm not getting involved. Okay, great. Well, then here's the thing. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time going back and forth with you about this since you already sound like you got your mind made up. You think that this is something that it isn't and you're willing to walk away from this opportunity because of that. Obviously, this being a pyramid isn't even the real determining factor whether or not you get involved. So let me just ask you before we part ways, is there anything that actually is the determining factor of whether or not you get involved? And if you say no to that, no, there's nothing. Okay, so under no circumstances would you be interested in doing this if it was a pyramid, if it was completely legit, if the money was real that I was telling you, if I could get you on the phone with one of, with one of my friends, Matt Sapala, you know, multimillionaire from this company, you know, drives a Rolls Royce, <laughs> who lives in a giant mansion. This is one of my personal mentors, one of my good friends. If you talk to someone and you knew that that story was real and he was 100% self-made, blew up this company and this is all real. So none of that would make any difference to you. Is that what you're saying? Yes, none of that would make a difference. Okay, sounds good. Well then look, I just want to reach out to you, my friend, to just do you a favor and put you on to what I'm about to do because I know what I'm about to do with this opportunity and I'm about to straight slay it. You were my homie from college. I wanted to bring you on board and just let you at least see what it is that we're doing. But at the end of the day, I really don't care if you do or if you don't. I just didn't want to go ahead and blow up and take off with this thing. And then you ever look at me and say, yo, C's, I thought we were cool. We went to college together. We hung out together. Like, how are you going to go ahead and take off and blow this thing up and not even tell me about it? Like, I didn't want to prejudge you. I just wanted to let you know, but I just wanted to triple confirm that you're hundred percent sure that you're out because I'm never going to bring this up again. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And I mean, you're smoked, bro. Smart. It's done. Total smoked and total. One of the things I want to get on here in a second is because of this whole social distancing and lack of human interaction and in the physical presence of one another. So for those of you watching the standby, because I'm going to be asking Caesar how best to approach people online, social media. Um, I want to go back here real quick to, um, uh, to the, the book here, Sandy Bach is about lower your taxes and, and why you'd be brain dead not to start a home-based business. He, he says here in this book, and I want your opinion on this. Okay. He says here, research has constantly shown that it is rarely the business that determines success or failure. 
it is usually the business owner. Why does one person succeed and another fail at the same time in business? Two words, knowledge and action. Some people want the benefits of having their own business, but they don't take action. Your thoughts? 100%. You know, 100%. Because here's the thing. When you look at my background, you look at my story, and you look at your library and all the stuff that you've read and the people that you surround yourself with, you are the sum of the five people that you associate with the most. You are what you ingest. So if you're watching negative stuff on TV all the time, and you know, you're, and I'm not saying completely tune out to, to everything that's going on in the world, but you gotta watch your consumption. Yeah. You gotta watch what you're studying. You gotta watch what you're putting in your ears. I mean, dude, there's no one that likes music more than me. I mean, I love music, yeah. but, when I got started in network marketing, the first hundred people I talked to in a row told me no, Matt. So it was so easy for me to quit. It was five months before I got my first, my first five yeses over five months. So I was struggling and it would have been so easy for me to quit. But instead I made a bolder decision. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to be weak anymore. I'm going to strengthen myself. I'm going to strengthen my mind. And I literally, this is what I did. This was one of my bolder moments that changed my life. The first one was starting in network marketing. One of the big other second moments was when I said, you know what? I'm going all in. After months of, of not seeing results, I literally called my mentor. I picked up and I moved to a city where I knew absolutely no one. He had a beach house in Carolina Beach and he had a house in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so what I did is I called him because he went to his beach house every week. And I said, look, if I go to that place where you have your beach house, if I move, I was living in Roanoke, Virginia, Matt. I said, look, if I pick up and move to this city where I know absolutely no one other than you on the weekends, just so that I could get around you, would you allow me to just shadow you and kind of hang out with you a little bit on the weekends here and there? And he said, kid, if you're crazy enough to move down to a city where you don't know anyone, just so that you could shadow me on the weekends. If you're crazy enough to do that, I'm crazy enough to say yes. Come on, <laughs> Wow. And I picked up Matt. Good for him. Good for him. I did not. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah, it was, he's an amazing person. Larry Gregory, love him to death. He's like, he's like my father, really. You know, um, I did nothing but read personal development books, listen to personal development audios, no radio. I mean, I was basically just bathing in personal development, reading all of the books that I could on everything to do with sales, psychology, network, marketing, communication, anything, anything that could possibly give me the edge. Cause this was the days before YouTube, man. This is before you could just type in Cesar Rodriguez prospecting training, you know, right. follow, prospecting. Like that was the days before that. So that's all I did. And so I agree with this author 100% because if you don't actually educate yourself to get the new skills and to up your game, then what's going to happen is you're going to go out there and you're going to, when you do do action, it's not going to be good. And you're going to get a lot of rejection and it's easy to get discouraged. If you're not surrounding yourself with the right types of people, if you're not really bathing in personal development, it's easy to, to flunk out, you know, but the thing is, man, is it's like getting in shape, <laughs> like being successful in network marketing is the same as getting in shape. Like right now, wherever you're at, whoever's watching this, there's another level of health and fitness for you. And guess what? You can get it. What do you got to do? Well, you got to watch what you put in your mouth, right? You got to focus on that, increase your exercise, get good sleep. There's just a couple of simple, basic things. And then there's iterations and levels of it, right? Once you start working out, you can get some results. It's just like network marketing. You can get started in network marketing. You can get some results. All you have to do is go out there and say, all right, cool. I need to read some books. I need to do some personal development. I need to plug into some training. And then I need to go out and practice on people. And guess what? When it's hard, just like when you work out, you know, it burns. And you're like, oh man, the lactic acid. Oh man, it burns. Oh, I'm so sore. Oh, oh. But if you keep going, you get better. And then all of a sudden, what used to be the heavy weight for you is now your warm up. Yeah. So you have to get educated and then you have to do the action. And the people that aren't doing those two things, they're not going and it's plan, do, review. Plan what you're going to do, go do it, and then review it. So get a game plan. That's what a lot of you guys are doing right now. Listening to us, learn knowledge. There's four types of knowledge, learn knowledge. That's all the stuff that you learn, right? Then there's 
activity knowledge. That's what you get from going out there and putting in the action, right? You learn by scraping your knees. You get a few, few no's. You try a script. You deliver it. And then it doesn't get taken very well. They aren't interested. And you go, all right, you know, is it the script or was it my delivery? Let me practice some more, right? right? That's the activity knowledge. And then there's a the modeling knowledge, which is what I did. Get around someone who's already successful. Learn from what they're doing. Model them, right? If you guys start acting more like Matt Zappala, you're going to end up more like Matt Zappala. You start acting more like me, start watching all my training videos <laughs> and start talking a lot bolder and a lot more confident. So you got to do that. And then there's learn knowledge, which is when you're actually teaching other people. So you learn more by teaching other people and by modeling. So really the succession, if you want to get better, it's learn knowledge, activity knowledge, go out and do it, find people who've already done it, model what they say, do what they do, and you'll get what they've got. And then go teach other people. And that's, of course, you've got a team. So now you're teaching other people. So it's better ingraining. Get, it's, it's getting ingrained in you that much deeper each time. Which one of those, which one of those methods do you think is most effective? Three. That's, that's it. Th the third one. So you learn more by teaching than anything else. Yeah. Right? Every single time. Like, that's why I can just rattle off scripts and quotes and I can say this, that, and the other. And it's because I've, I've taught it so many times. Yeah. I mean, I have hundreds of quotes in my head that I could just drop at any situation. I don't have a script for any question you're giving me. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. just talking. talking, but I've said, I've taught so many people these ways of overcoming objections that it's easy for me to do. But the fastest hack is modeling knowledge. It's to find someone. And that's what I did. I stumbled on that accidentally by calling up my mentor and saying, listen, if I move to this city, will you just let me watch you? And I saw this guy walk around, Matt, because he was super charismatic. I mean, he was 55 years old. He, you know, he would go up to people and he just had this charisma where he'd just be like, he'd say to any woman, any woman, if they were moderately attractive, especially if they were attractive, he'd walk up to him and he'd say, well, hello, young lady, my goodness, you must be a model. What do you do? You know? And like, they would just be like, oh, stop. Because <laughs> he just had this delivery and he was this 55 year old you know, white guy, you know, with, you know, uh, white hair, gray hair. And so he just wasn't threatening. He was just very playful, but he had a strong posture. So yeah. I got around him and then I started doing that stuff. And hello, young lady, my goodness. And they would look at me and they'd be like, young lady, I'm, son, I've got children your age. How dare you? You know, like, <laughs> and That's I realized funny. you don't do exactly as they do necessarily. You have to modify and tweak, but that's the game. That's the art of it. Yep. You know, but modeling knowledge, man, modeling knowledge. That's why so many of the stuff, so many things that I do, I'm just like, just watch someone else do it. I, I want to go over this, uh, this uh, quick article here by a business insider. Okay. And um, let me just share this on my screen here. Go three, two, one. You should be able to see it, Caesar. Okay. A lot of people lost jobs this year. And this was back in April. And, and I suspect with the lockdown happening again. Yeah. People are really, 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 really losing their jobs <clears throat> and or their businesses. But here are the top 10 jobs that are the hardest hit. So number number 10 on this list is hotels. If you're working in a hotel business, hotel manager, hotel industry. Uh, um, I fly into Dallas literally every other week. And I stay at the La Meridian. Mm -hmm. And they don't even have, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, maid services. They said the only time we upkeep a room is when you check out because we have to stay away from all the germs. So I come from it. This is La Meridian as a, a decent hotel. So I, I come back and my bed's still unmade and all those different things because they don't have the service. They don't have the bar. They don't have the food. And you know, so if you're working at a hotel, your job's at risk. Your job would it's continue to be at risk. So obviously sports and performing arts. You just mentioned that you're, you, you, you can't dance on stage because you're not being hired as a live speaker. You can do it over zoom. And all the supporting jobs, concession stands, you know, the people with security, um, parking, the parking lot attendants, furniture and home furnishing stores getting hit hard. So if you're working in these uh, uh, type of careers, you might want to consider home-based business. Uh, restaurants and bars goes without saying. Uh, um, uh, I was a I was a bartender. I was a server. And uh, if if the uh, uh, the 23 year old version of Matt was here today, you know, hard pressed to learn your skills. I learned my sales skills through a Jiffy Lube, being a Jiffy Lube hood technician and, uh, and a waiter. I learned people skills and just patient with people. Movie, uh, motion production and sound recording, hard hit. Dentist offices. So if you're a dental technician, mm. 
Uh, another one here, laundry and other personal services. Uh, clothing stores, retail stores. Uh, how is it over there? Because over here in Chicago, no more than 10 people in a store at once. It ruins the experience. I would be able to answer that question with a little more certainty if I actually had left my house since the quarantine. <laughs> Not because I'm afraid or anything. I just don't have anything to do outside of my house is beautiful. I mean, I'm glad I bought a big ass house. You know? That's it. Love it, man. No, there's Uber Eats. We get food delivered to us. Whole Foods delivers, you know, yeah. through Amazon Prime. We have an assistant in our house right now cooking up our meals. I know yeah. I'm sounding really first world right now and I'm probably pissing off a lot of people. Well, bro, you created a job. I mean, I did. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, dude, I've got tons of people that I pay. Of course. You know, no, yeah, dude. I mean, videographers, just so many different people. Sure. That, that's, that's why you make money. You make money to create jobs. Spread it around, man. Spread yeah. it around. You know, but I, I haven't been in a, in a mall. I haven't yeah. been in a mall barely at all. So I have no idea what the rules of yeah. right now. Number two jobs, most hit hard, amusement parks and casinos. You know, the irony behind this? Disney, right? Disney is closed in Disneyland in California. Okay. But Disney World, Red State, open in, <laughs> in Florida. I, yeah. I, For a little, sure. little quick jab there. <laughs> number, number one, scenic, scenic transportation. I mean, downtown Chicago here through the Chicago River. I, th I think this might be even the Chicago River right here. But um, yeah, they're all shut down. All, you know, bike tours and what do you call those things? That you, you the, the little thing you stand up on and just goes. If you have been in any of those industries, if you're even close to that industry, if your job has even mildly been affected, then you should be doing something different. Yep. I mean, you should. I mean, I, I wanna hear what your direct question is on this, yep. but I mean. Here, like, here's my direct question. Go ahead. Like, okay, I was a bartender, I was a server, I was a concession stand worker. I was, you know, I was, you know, working one of these 10 careers in these jobs. I was in airlines. I was a flight attendant. I don't know sales, Caesar. I, I don't. I don't know how to approach people, Caesar. I don't know anything about business, Caesar. I, I don't know how to do that. What's your, what's your, what's your reply? So, first of all, again, it all has to do with how they're saying it. If this is an objection coming from a prospect, and the person goes, "Oh, I don't know sales. I don't you know, know all this." My question to you is going to set is going to be. All right, well, what you do know, it's obviously not working right now. You know, if you're in one of these industries and they've been affected, you've already put your financial future in the hands of someone else that has proven themselves to be unequipped to protect you, to protect your finances, to protect your life and to look over after you and to make sure that your bills are paid. Yeah. So you have been doing things the way that you've been doing them and you've literally just put your entire livelihood in the hands of an industry that's been proven to not serve you well during this pandemic. So my question to you is, would it be worth it to you to learn new skills if they were being taught to you? And if you had a blueprint, if you had support, if you had leadership, if you had people that were working with you and wanting to see you win, and we taught you everything that you needed to know and gave you everything that you needed to say and started you out and worked with you throughout this process, would you be the type of person that would be willing to learn new ideas and new skills so that you could be better equipped for the world that we now live in today? Wow. Really? For, for real? For real, Caesar? I mean, I don't know. I love it. I love it. So I, this is sales. The sales one went. The first one to talk loses. That's right. That's it. That's it, man. I mean, I'm not. You say you're just watching him squirm. Watch go. I mean, what <laughs> I've just done, put it right back into into you. Like, are you willing to learn new skills? Because, like, oh, I don't know how to sell. I don't know. Because, look, here's the thing. I didn't either. You know. And also, you can insert a personal story. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty Slayer objections training. I don't know what you're going to call this thing, but this is. Yeah, this is crazy. This, how we're, we're how to overcome objections and not be stupid. I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's just, 
Man. Yeah. In, 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 the, in the subtitling of the, of the episode, I had to put, watch Matt squirm at minute <laughs> tries to pretend to be stupid. <laughs> he can't even do it. The smart money guy tries to be stupid. <laughs> but, but so that's what, that's the type of stuff that I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it right back in your court. Yep. And I'm just going to ask, like, do you want to learn? And then I'm going to share a story because my story, for example, and there's a million stories in people of your company. I mean, Matt, you were, you were in the Marines, yep. right? Yep. So yep. what they teach you about selling there? <laughs> they said, Zero. right? Said, follow orders, man. Follow orders, follow the rank of command. Don't question authority, right? But look at you now. So everyone's got a story. There's so many people. There's so many stories in your company and every company, my own life where I wasn't good. Now I am, you know, I just had a conversation not too long ago, Matt, you know, one of the things you mentioned is, you know, uh, the airlines and flight attendant was one of the things that you said, you know, it's funny. I actually have a friend, good friend, love this girl. And I actually, uh, noticed on her Instagram, you know, as we were talking, uh, I was like, Hey, listen, I noticed your Instagram says you're furloughed, which for those of you that don't know, that means like you're temporarily laid off until we call you back in. And, uh, she, you know, she was furloughed. And I said, oh, wow, so you're furloughed. Like, what are you doing right now to make money? Like, do you have another plan? Like thinking that I am going to maybe potentially refer her, you know, to someone because I don't actively build a network marketing company. Now as a generic trainer, I serve the entire industry. But because I have good friends like you and people in all these different types of companies, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll say, hey, you know, man, I got this girl. She's really sharp. I think she'd do well in something like this. Like, you know, I want to introduce you to. And maybe she gets started, maybe she doesn't, you know, but I will do that all the time, you know, to, to people that I feel like there's a good match. So I thought, I was like, well, let me help her out. Cause she's a friend. I don't want her to starve and count on the air airline for calling her back as her only source of income. And I asked her, I said, so you're going to do something. Are you going to get some other type of job or side hustle or do something from home, you know, in the meantime. And she goes, no, yeah, not really. I'm just going to kind of wait to see if they call me back and and if they don't bring me back, then I guess I'll have to go, you know, do something. But until then, I'm just going to get unemployment. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, like, you're literally going to gamble and just sit on the sidelines and just like, see if your company calls you to say, Hey, listen, sorry, American airlines, we had to let off 30,000 more people. So you're one of them. Sorry. Yep. Then you go get, you're not going to do anything now in the meantime to try to make money. Like to me, I thought that was crazy. Yeah. Yep. But. I didn't spend a bunch of time trying to overcome it. Yep. I, yeah. I threw something right back at her. I was like, well, Hey, listen, you know, that's one way to look at it. But another idea may be if you want to do something where you can make money from home, you can capitalize off of your social media following. Cause I see you posting, you know, pictures of yourself every day on social media. They're great pictures, right? You know, she's kind of doing the model thing. And I'm like, if you want to learn how to monetize that, make some money online while you're at home. And then if they don't call you back, you still have something cooking. Would that be something you'd be interested in? And she was just kind of like, no, nah, yeah, not really. I'm just going to oh. wait. So, <laughs> done. Conversation's over. I did my part. It's being the king of prospecting is deciding whether or not somebody's an actual prospect or they're a suspect. That's right. Prospect is just, And you just talk to prospects. Hey. In, in, in your definition, before I start asking you based on that, because I think it's a good transition segue to cool. approaching, uh, approach me, especially online. Um, what is your definition, Mr. King of prospecting? What is your definition of who a prospect is? Somebody that has the ability and the desire to get started in a business like mine. And they're able to do it immediately. Like to me, I want to deal with people who are ready to get started and have the ability to do it. Because one of the biggest things is there are people that have conditions and there are people that have objections. An objection might be someone saying, I don't have the money, right? That is an objection. Now, if they genuinely don't have it and they have no way to access it, now it is a condition. Yeah. But I don't yeah. assume objections are conditions. I qualify, I dig. I ask the right questions and I try to find out, is this the thing that is actually holding this person back legitimately? And even if it's a condition, I'm going to find out, okay, so what you're saying is you don't have that amount of money in your bank account. 
is this worth raising the amount of money to get started in? Like, if you could get it, would you be doing it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to know how to go out there and get the money? Would you like some ideas? Would you like some help to raise the money to get started in this? That's how I'm going to start to determine, hey, is this person a prospect or a suspect? Because if- And what would you tell them? What would you tell them, Caesar? Well, how, how is, let's say I, it costs me 500 bucks, a thousand bucks to get started in this business. How would they go about raising? What's some of the ideas? What's some of the ideas? Okay. Well, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to find out, number one, even if someone says that, I'm going to say, look, I, we can spitball some ideas back and forth, but I just need to know if we come up with a good idea, are you willing to actually take action on it? Or are you mm -hmm. in a slip? Love it. <laughs> I think it's, it's my twin, man. Like, see, it's my twin, bro. <laughs> it's, like, it's my brother, my Puerto Rican brother from another mother, man. Yeah, because why go through all that and they're not willing to make a decision or take action? Correct. Why waste your time? Yeah. So I'm going to qualify. No, 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 man. I'm serious. I'm serious. Okay. I'm even going to dig even more. It's like, okay. So why are you serious about this? Why is this something that is worth? Cause I'm going to give you some ideas and we're going to come up with something. We're look when, when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. And I breed champions here. Yep. So let me ask you why, what is it about this opportunity that you think that this is worth you coming up with the money for? Because I want to tell you, I love your mindset right now. So far, how this conversation is going, I love it. And you're the type of person that I know has the potential to do really big things here because you're hungry and you're willing to find a way where there is no way. And that is what champions do. But I just want to know, what is it about this opportunity that's really unlocked your eyes and your vision? Or what is it about what we've said or we've conversed here in this conversation that's already got you in the mindset that you know that you need change and you know that you need to do something drastic today. What is it that you've just seen that's giving you that? Love it. Yep. Yep. And they, they, and they share their thoughts, ideas, and you, pat, you, you, you remember that because you bring it up later on because it becomes another objection. Awesome. So now, so now if I say you play Xbox, PlayStation, right? And then I say, I mean, I know Patrick, but David just put a video up about, you know, how someone, something to do with PlayStation. And, uh, you know, I didn't see the, the whole video because this thing was going, I literally just saw it before. And I was like, oh, I want to watch this. But I mean, here's the thing. Now, if I say, well, why don't we go ahead and, and go on Facebook, you know, f Facebook marketplace. Let's, let's sell your PlayStation. Let's sell the games. Let's <gasps> that. But yeah, you freak out. You're like, oh, what? I couldn't. Uh, well, hey, hey, okay. A minute ago, you told me. Uh, boom. See, there it is. So the only reason I mentioned something like that is because you told me. Now, I've had people that have sold the flat screen TVs off of their wall. Sure. I've had people go out and shovel snow. Yeah. I've had people ask, you know, you said $500. I've had people ask five people for $100. Yeah. You know, I've had people ask for different denominations. Hey, what can you do? I'm going to get you back. Yeah. And those people that do come up with that money, how well do you think they do when they're coming in already that hungry into what we have? Yeah, I mean, Caesar, we, we took, a, even for us here, you know, um, granted, we're, we're, we're cash flow millionaires, but that doesn't mean we frivolously spend money. I mean, Ivan, when we, uh, when we needed to upgrade our cameras, we took our cameras, we sold them on Facebook Marketplace, right? Absolutely. Within, within a week or two, or, e, or eBay, or the lights. So we took that same, so we took the same capital, instead of spending it, we took the same capital and reinvested back into these beautiful lights that we have now that you can see the side of my face, right? You, you are glow. They got you lit up, right, buddy? <laughs> Good. What, 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 what do you got? A light dome? We got a, we got a side light, back light, <laughs> all these type of things, but we have, and a, and a regular light here from, from natural lighting, but there you go. There you so go. Those are some of the things. Yeah. So yeah, go to Facebook marketplace, uh, which is uh, offer up, offer up is another app that you uh, can sell some things and, you know, um, you know, I got people that are sneaker heads. They can sell their sneakers online because people, some de they dead stock uh, stuff. And there's so many different things that you can do to, 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 to raise money and the capital. Cesar, let me ask you this question. Would you pay for them? Would I pay for someone to get started? Yeah. Absolutely not. Correct. Never. Why? Explain why. Because people do not appreciate that which is given to them easily and without effort. Go ahead and write that down. That's a little Caesarism. For <laughs> it's a Caesarism. That's a Caesarism, right? And it ties into the, my method of recruiting. I have a very different alternative way of selling and presenting, you know, when, with anything that I do, I can come up with a pitch for most things, you know, pretty quickly. And I know how to position it 
in such a way that gets that prospect selling themselves to you. And yep. that's problems with a lot of the things that, you know, uh, reps that are struggling in your company and in all companies yep. struggle with. And I've had people that just with a few little tweaks in your company who follow me that mm -hmm. I've just given them yeah, and they start changing their posture, they start changing their mentality. They start talking more like guys like you and I, they start knowing what it is that they have and they yep. stop giving it away so cheaply. And then what ends up happening is your prospects start to appreciate it. So I don't ever pay for anyone's way to get in. And listen, I've learned this from firsthand. I have paid people's way back in the day when I was new and I didn't know any better. Yep. But all I was doing is robbing them of their amazing story that they could have had if they went out there and sold their PlayStation and they went out there and they sold some of their shoes on StockX or whatever the case, yeah. you know, if they did something like that and then they could raise that money, then all of a sudden they're going to have an amazing story when they blow up in their business, because we're going to be able to say like, listen, when you get an objection about money, it's all about your story. If someone ever says pay for me, I just tell them straight up. I'm like, listen, I, I would never do that because I would never rob you of your story. Yeah. Like your story. Look, you're going to get people that tell you that you don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do? You can say, oh yeah, I know what that's like, you know, but luckily my guy was rich and he was paid. So he just covered me and I, sorry, I don't got it like that to do you. So I guess you're out of luck. Like, no, yeah. like instead you get a chance to say, Hey, listen, man, I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way. What I found out was if I kept doing what I was doing, I was going to keep getting what I was getting. So yeah. I decided to me not having the money, just like you, I said, I'm going to find the money. I'm going to make a way. And I did. And because of that, here's where I am today. So I see you in the same position I was, and I see a piece of me and you, I just need to know before we go any further, do you have that hunger and that drive and that willingness way to come the money to do something like this? Gotcha. You still be able to overcome everyone else's money objections for the rest of your life. So for it would be me robbing you of your greatest objection handling tool, which is your own story. Yeah. So before I give you ways to raise a cab and get your business started, I want to know, are you serious? And are you willing to take action? And some of those how to sell old stuff, you know, so Facebook marketplace offer up, you know, eBay, ask for money, credit cards. That's it. Cool. All right. And I've always, and by the way, it, uh, it, it's uh, something I've always, I've always said. If people can find money for the, the, the new iPhone drop, if people can find money for the new uh, PlayStation drop, people can find money for the new Jordans that dropped. Yeah. Shoot, if, if, uh, if an alcoholic can find money for beer and wine, right? If uh, somebody hooked on drugs can find money for the fix, are you getting out hustled by somebody that likes those things more than you do appreciate your own success? If you are, why are you getting out of hustled by those folks? You don't really have a serious desire to do this. I, I get it. Cool. All right. Let me ask you this question. Transition. Okay. Somebody gets it. And one of the things as I'm reading through you too, Caesar, is because you've done this over and over and over and over again, you have a level of posturing and confidence as it comes to prospecting. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's one thing to know what to say, but it's the confidence of which you deliver it and the tonality and the energy of what you delivered is also very important outside of just what to say. Am I right? Am I, am I spot on with that? hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not necessarily what you say. It's how you say it, you know? Yeah. And like Maya Angelou uh, once said, you know, people don't remember what you say. They remember how you make them feel. Yeah. That's it. So let's talk about uh, some, some uh, other areas of practicality. Okay. I mean, I'm serious, Caesar. I got my money. I sold my, Jordans and I raise the money to start my business. I got my code number now with you. See, I'm fired up, man. Okay, what's my next move? Okay, your next move is you got to start smiling and dialing or, reach, or reaching out to people, right? And let's say it's social media. Let's talk about social media prospecting very quick. Okay. Give us an approach. Give us uh, uh, the best thoughts on social media prospecting and doing it online. Okay. So when it comes to social media, marketing training and prospecting and closing and recruiting on social media. A lot of times where people mess up is it kind of goes back to what I said before. People don't appreciate that which is given to them easily and without effort. 
So what ends up happening is the majority of people in network marketing, the way that they're building their social media end of their business is they're out there screaming from the mountaintops, man, we're looking for people. Look at this. Look at that. Look at me. Look at all this stuff. We're, 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 we're hiring. We're looking. We're, who wants this? And we're all out there. We're peddling. Yeah. And we're looking like we're at one of those, you know, bazaars, you know, like in, in yeah. India where everyone's like, you know, so, Hey, what you got, what you got, what you got. Hey, come on, come on over here. Right. And so what ends up happening is you're devaluing your brand, you're devaluing your look and hmm. you're treating people when you do message them, like they're all the same, you know, yeah. have all these copy and paste scripts that they use. And they honestly just sound weak. They come across with no posture and they're not specific. So if you want to start to separate yourselves from the masses, yep. what you need to do is you need to be more specific with your prospecting efforts. Meaning look at something specific on someone's profile. Now, if it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever the platform, everyone's got a little bit of a bio. Look at someone's bio, see what you can figure out about what they're doing, see what you can figure out about what they're saying. If you don't already know them, if you're watching their stories on Instagram and they're posting something like, oh, I just got furloughed from the airlines or something like I just mentioned earlier, right? That was a friend of mine who I just went on her page and I was like, oh, wow, she's furloughed. She's out of work. That's a conversation piece. So it was very specific. So I wasn't like, hey, are you looking and keeping your options open? Like, I was like, hey, look, furlough, doesn't that mean that you're no longer working for the airline? What happened with that? And now I have a personal conversation on that subject. Or if someone's posting about something, oh, another, you know, thank God it's Friday. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. This person is like, their job is beating them up. Like, hey, man, what, what's that post about? Sounds like you had a long work week. What's cracking? You know, so I'm going to ask questions about specific things that have to do with their life. And if I'm looking at their bio on Facebook, I'm going to say something that's based on maybe their location, what it is that they do for a living. Like, hey, listen, it looks like you're in real estate right now. And it looks like before that you were doing cars. And I'm looking at your last post that you did, or, you know, your last three posts were about this, that, and the other, you know, I'm just curious, you know, how's real estate is compared to car sales. Are you liking it? How's it going right now in the times of COVID? Are you crushing it? What's cracking, right? What's happening? Like, I'm just going to start a conversation about something specific. And then when they go, oh yeah, man, things are great, blah, 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 or things are slow. It doesn't matter whichever way they go. I'm going to meet them where they're at and then take them to where I want them to go. Love it. So Love specific. it. So being specific. So you basically stalk the profile a little bit. You know, take a look at that. They're posting. Obviously it's public. Recon. You've heard of that term, I'm sure, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do a little recon on their page, a little reconnaissance. Yep. A little bit and then start asking questions. Yeah. You're gotcha. gonna get more, here's the thing. You're going to get more. And here's a big misconception, powerful misconception with social media. Uh, prospecting and recruiting. And listen, I literally have a ton of training on that, like a ton. I mean, on my YouTube channel, I've got lots of stuff on that. Um, I've got an entire training that I did just on my YouTube channel, just on that one subject. And I have an entire even course that's like back gated, like almost no one can find it, you know, um, except for some private community members that I have that specifically, it's like a three hour course on social media, prospecting and recruiting. And I have had this tested a million different times with all the people that have gone through my courses and watch my trainings. These people who are out there, they're like, I sent out a hundred messages but I got, I literally had a, a girl just the other day, Joanna, she messaged me and she had one out of a hundred people were giving her her phone number, right? So she had one out of a hundred people when she was out there prospecting, she wasn't being very specific. She was putting in a lot of work. Mm -hmm. She was busy. Mm -hmm. Her own says it's very possible to be busy doing figure eights. Mm -hmm. She got one out of a hundred people. I did one video, just one training message, you know, and I shared it with her. And I said, cause she asked me some, Hey, what's going on? And I said, what are you saying? How's it going? And then I told her what to say and what to change. And all of a sudden she went from one out of a hundred to 84 out of 200. So that's like 40, 84, so that'd be 42 out of a hundred. So from 1% to 42% close rate on pulling people's numbers. And it's less work because yeah. at the, end of the day, it's not about how much work you put in It's what kind of results are you trying to get? Boom. You know, do you want to spend 17 hours writing messages and, and message 200 people? Yeah. Or do you want to spend 
a couple hours and message 20 people and get more phone numbers out of that because you did one or two messages beforehand, which makes your business and your brand look good too, Matt, because if people are out there saying, oh, PHP agency, like right off the bat, you know, it, now they're looking spammy and they're hurting the brand of your company versus right. getting it back, finding out what's important to them, then saying, listen, I've got something that I think that you're going to love. It's right up your alley. And here's what it is. Oh man, it's insurance. I don't know about that. Like, Hey, I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way. What I found out with this company's operating on a totally different level. They do things completely different than everyone else, which is why they've come up from seemingly nowhere and disrupted the entire industry. Boom. Talking our language, bro. I got you, bro. That's it. C Caesar, uh, la last question, man, before I let you go, you, you've been extremely generous with your time. And obviously we're going to be asking you for you know, your, your handle. So therefore we can follow you on social media and your website. But if, you know, Facebook, you know, live video, whether it be Facebook live or Instagram live, seems to be the hot algorithm that both channels like to promote over a lot of other posts. Sure. If I was starting brand new right now, okay, right? Knowing what you know now, because I know when you started network marketing, direct sales, there was no live video. You had a you know, profession to produce stuff and then upload it and hopefully people see it. And now live video is getting a lot of traction because I think social media is competing with mainstream media with live video and live action. They want the, eye, they want the eyeballs and live videos. It seems to be the, yeah. the, the product that seems to be getting a lot of uh, news feed interaction. If I was to do a live feed right now, what would you suggest? I discussed, I just got started, I'm brand new, I'm coming from the military, right? What would you advise a 23, 24 year old version of Matt coming out the Marine Corps about my new entrance into the insurance industry? I'm or I'm coming from teaching, I'm coming from, I'm coming from uh, customer service. In, in a general sense, what would you advise us if I was to put one live video to be like, the, I wanna track uh, numbers and in, in interest versus pitching, being being uh being that way what would you suggest so that is a super great question and i actually would just say this if if you want just because it would be easier okay it goes into more detail i literally just uploaded a video on this so depending on whenever someone's watching it it's yeah. on youtube it's called how to create curiosity posts okay and if you type that in, in my name, Cesar Rodriguez, how to create curiosity posts, yep. um, you will see an entire video training on that. That's, you know, several minutes, lots in detail. And it shows how to do that from a product perspective and from an actual recruiting perspective as well. Beautiful. So there's an entire video there. So you guys can maybe link to it, but you know, the biggest thing that I would do is I would, you know, ask you a couple of questions and I would find out a little bit about your story. You know, because a big part of what most people don't have together is it's their story. And that's one of the things that I happen to be really good at crafting people's stories. So I would ask a couple questions about, you know, why it is that you got started. You know, again, why did you get started with this, Matt? Why do you believe that you're going to blow this thing up? You know, what is it that we're trying to do? Do we want to recruit some people? Okay, great. We need to create a curiosity post that is based on recruiting. And that might be you going online. And again, that video, it's, it, it breaks it down. And it has some scripts of me literally giving both examples. But one of the things that I would say is, let's say it's for recruiting. Well, I want you to just, I want to draw an analogy for, for all of you watching this, you know, and you as well, Matt. With most people, I've hired so many people for jobs. So many people for jobs, videographers, video editors, primarily, because I love, you know, I love that whole landscape. Mm -hmm. And like you, I'm always trying to have dope videos. So every time I've ever done, and every time I've ever looked for a videographer, video editor, I, the first thing that I do is I put out on social media. I'll first go to my following on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll just put on Facebook or Instagram, especially on, on Facebook. I've always done on Facebook and I would just do a post and I would say, Hey guys, I'm looking for a videographer. Um, if anyone knows anyone, go ahead and tag them in a comment below. If anyone knows any good, talented videographers, um, or you happen to be one, you know, tag them in a comment below or drop a comment below and then send me a DM, right? Shoot me a personal message, you know, and we can have a combo, you know, so we can have a combo. And what ends up happening is that 
that post has such low friction. No one's going, is this a pyramid? Is this a <laughs> just something that people are used to hearing, right? Oh, I'm looking for someone that's a videographer. So what if instead of having this big fancy schmancy, you know, thing where you're going into all the details of PHP, if you just said, Hey, what's going on? Uh, Matt Zapala here, guys, just doing a Facebook Live. I've never really done one of these before, but I just wanted to, to put out there that I know right now that there's a lot of companies that are struggling. There's a lot of people that are struggling because of COVID and they just are having trouble making extra money. They don't have ways of you know, making money from home. Well, I was, I was in that situation and I just thought to myself, man, I need you to do something different. So I started looking around. I started interviewing, uh, you know, different uh, leaders and people who were very successful in different industries and just asking what their takes are, what industries were thriving, what people were really crushing it and getting it done. And I just asked for some advice. And I happened to run across someone who was extremely sharp and successful. It was a friend of mine. And they said, listen, the one industry that's killing it right now is this industry that they happen to be a part of. And they told me about it. They told me that I could work from home at my own schedule, part-time. And mm -hmm. I don't want to go into all the details here because I'm not trying to look like I'm trying to sell anyone here. This is just a Facebook Live to just put out to my friends that if any of you guys are interested and you're looking to do anything right now on top of what you're already doing, or maybe even something that could replace what you're doing, then just shoot me a message, drop a comment below and just say, I'm interested or hit me up. And then also shoot me a message. That way I can see the comment below and I can also know to look for it in case it ends up in like my spam folder on Facebook or my other folder or whatever the case is. And if you happen to know anyone right now that's looking for work, looking for a way to make extra money from home, feel free to tag them in a comment below. Done, simple, authentic Facebook Live. They're looking into the camera, they feel them, they're a fellow friend, they're connected with them somehow, some way. Yeah. Low friction, man. Low friction. I'm not, I, and I'm not sounding like, do I sound at all like I'm trying to sell yeah. you on doing my thing? I'm just like, look, man, I was struggling. I was looking for something. I happen to know someone. They hooked me up. They introduced me to a person. And because of that, I honestly feel guilty knowing what I know now and not letting some of my other friends out there know about this. So again, I don't want to, this isn't some sales pitch. I don't care if you hit me up. I have zero I have zero cares of whether or not you're looking for something other than the fact that I didn't want anyone that I know or any friends or people that are close to any people that I know to struggle right now when that doesn't have to be an option. Yeah. Love it, bro. Steve's love it, man. King of prospecting. I tell you, man, we got to reconnect offline. I, I, I got some ideas. I got some thoughts, but uh, before I wrap up, brother, send us the info that you got for us to contact you, man. If people are curious about improving their skill game when it comes to prospecting, their clarity on what they're doing, so therefore they have more success out of their direct sales or network marketing business or work from home, home-based based business than they have before. Well, I mean, I would just invite everyone watching this to just connect with me personally on Facebook, Instagram, um, my YouTube channel. There's a, a place that you can go, it's b10xb.com. So this is actually the movement. I didn't talk much about this here, B10XB, but I said in the beginning of the call, you know, cause uh, you know, Matt brought something up. It's all part of a game that we play. Those of us who are believers in this movement or who are followers of this movement, we just play a little game each and every day. And anytime we feel fear and decision or doubt. So anytime you're scared to prospect someone, anytime you're scared to go talk to someone, shoot them a message, do that Facebook live that I literally just gave you a banging script for. Some of you guys are probably making excuses. Well, oh, no, I, my camera isn't good. And it's, <laughs> and I don't have a video team like Matt Zapala that's going to put the perfect amount of, you know, exposure on my face. Just make me glow. Like if whatever excuse you're coming up with, I'm not going to call this person who's on my chicken list. Here's a little game that you can play. Anytime you feel fear and decision or doubt, procrastination, anxiety, hesitation, whatever. Just ask yourself, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? And whatever you come up with in that moment, you have to do it. And if you don't do it, it's because you link pain to getting out of your comfort zone and pleasure to being inside of your comfort zone. And success is not found inside of your comfort zone. Success is found in the bolder 
zone. So what you do is get yourself a little rubber wristband or a little B10XB wristband. I have all these and I'll give this to anyone. I'll set, you guys will have to pay for the shipping, but I'll give you one for free on the house just because you're with PHP and you're with Matt and you're coming through this video. Um, but you get a little rubber wristband, you just pull back on your wrist, snap it on your wrist. And it'll link pain to you not getting out of your comfort zone. And after enough painful snaps, your brain will start to rewire itself that it is painful to not be bold. And the next time you get into one of those situations where it's, I'm going to go prospect this person, do a Facebook live, whatever, you're going to remember this. You're going to remember this video. You cannot forget it. It is in your brain. I'm sorry. There's no turning away. There's no running back. You already know the question. What would I do if I was 10 times bolder? So when you feel fear, anxiety, indecision, you start making a bunch of excuses, you already know, what would I do if I was 10 times bolder? And if you don't do it, you snap that wristband. And if you do do it, congratulations, you've won that round. You've completed another set. And because you become what you think about and repeatedly do, if you continuously act like a 10 times bolder version of yourself, you will end up becoming a 10 times bolder version of yourself. So that is what B10XB and the movement is all about. And for those of you who want to participate in that game and you want to start asking yourself, I'm just going to tell you, you're going to blow up in your company. I've had people that literally there's one guy, he's got a B10XB tattoo, Matt, and he got it right on his wrist and he was an insurance guy. Really? He wasn't even with your company. So he didn't even have a comp plan as good as yours. <laughs> and this guy, someone from his office, someone wise, his office manager walked in his office with a bag of these wristbands and he just started throwing them to all these different people that were on all his salespeople. He's just throwing them. He's like, hey man, get this, wear this, wear this, wear this. And then this guy, Carlos, he said, well, what is this thing about? And he just goes, just YouTube, this guy, Cesar Rodriguez and B10XB and just learn about it. So he did. And he saw this video. He heard that message and he said, all right, I'm going to play this game. And he kept doing that and doing that and snapping his wristband. Yeah. And because of where he was, he was just kind of a middle manager and not really like a producer, just kind of like middle of the pack, you know, type of guy making some sales, paying the bills, nothing special. He went to doing that. And making, I think about $40,000 for the year to having his first year where he made over six figures. Mm. And it was all just from asking himself that question. What would I do if I was 10 times bolder? An objection comes in. What would I do if I was 10 times bolder? I'm going to go talk to that person. Oh, no, wait, they're wearing a mask and handshaking isn't cool. And six, we got to be six feet away. I can't prospect that person. All cold market prospecting is canceled because of COVID. No. What would you do if you were 10 times bolder? You might fist bump them. You might talk to them from six feet away. You might throw your mask on and still smile through the mask and still make them laugh through the mask. What would I do if I was 10 times older? I'd say this. So the best way to connect with me is to hit me up on all these different socials. And if you feel this movement and you want to play, just go to b10xb.com forward slash connect. And that'll give you all of the different ways that you can connect with me. So I've sent people in the past to CesarLRodriguez.com, which is my website. But the thing is, you know, you go there, it's hard to find my Instagram and my YouTube because it's just not all linked all pretty. So I've got a little page there and there's even a um, link where you can join the Facebook group. And if you message me and you happen to go to that page, B10XB.com slash connect. So it'll let you connect with me and all my socials. Uh, if you hit me back, if you hit me up, I'll actually even give you a rubber wristband. So I'll send one to you wherever you are. Just cover the shipping. That's all I ask because I don't know where everyone's watching this list. There might be, I know there's people outside of your company that might watch this and they're like, oh, I'm in Lithuania. Like <laughs> Romania. <Okay. laughs> so, so that's how you connect with me. You know, find me. My name's Cesar L. Rodriguez is everywhere. You know, type it in on Instagram. You'll see me. I'm friends with Matt. So that's pretty much it. You just got to spell my name right. And you guys will throw that on screen with all your fancy video editing stuff, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> See, we're going to use that. I mean, make sure I, when he goes like that, you put his, put his stuff in just because. See, and he, let me make sure you slide it off at the same time, too. So he, oh, shoot. One, one more time, Caesar. One more time. One more time, Caesar. <laughs> B10XB.com forward slash connect. See, he, he's giving you the motions. Guys, uh, I've always said 85% of your success is due to the first 15% of your process. And the first 15% of your process is the prospecting approach and contact side of your business to give you clarity, confidence, and the skill set mm. to put anybody and get rid of that chicken list. Everybody's the top 25 list. Everybody deserves a conversation with you. Yeah. If you 
feel really that passion about how you're helping people through your company, your product, and or your service. Caesar, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for uh, spending some time with us here on the Seven Figure Squad. And uh, for those of you that's watching, just make sure you follow b10xb.com forward slash connect. See, I got one. I got one in. <laughs> That being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like to follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next video. And thank you for watching this episode here during Vlogmas 2020, where we share with you and upload a video every day from the 1st of December to the 24th of December to give back, to help you understand the rules of the money game, to help you develop an income strategy for 2021. So therefore, you never have to worry about money Again, and number three, to grow you as an individual, as a person, and grow your leadership and making sure that uh, you take charge and responsibility of every, every aspect of your life. That being said, on behalf of Cesar L. Rodriguez, the king of prospecting, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, be money smart today. Bye-bye, guys.